In this lesson, I'll show you how to classify quadratic equations. A polynomial equation of second degree is called a quadratic equation. And what I mean by second degree is that the independent variable, say for example x, has a power of 2. That's what it means to have a second degree. Quadratic equations come in several forms. For example, the simplest of them all looks like this. y is equal to x squared. Notice that our independent variable x is raised to the power of 2. When graphed, this quadratic forms a parabola whose vertex is directly at the origin where it's symmetrical. What's also interesting about this quadratic is that it doesn't contain a first degree term. Take for example the equation y is equal to x squared. We don't have the addition or subtraction of another term such as x. Quadratics such as these are called pure quadratics and can be solved by setting one side of the equation equal to zero and then solving for x. Question number one reads, solve the pure quadratic equation 3x squared minus 75 is equal to zero. This is a pure quadratic because it does not contain a first degree term. It does however contain the constant minus 75 and that's fine. So the first thing that I'll do is take this minus 75 over to the right side. This gives us 3x squared is equal to 75. The next step is to divide both sides by 3 x squared is equal to 75 divided by 3. x squared therefore is equal to 25. And something that's interesting about quadratics is that given that it's a second degree equation, this means that there is a maximum number of solutions of two. We can have up to two solutions. If it's a first degree equation, you have a maximum of one solution. And that was evident with all the linear equations that we've solved in the past. So if we square root both sides right now to get this x isolated, I'll end up with the square root of 25. The square root of 25 is equal to plus minus 5. It's important that you include plus minus 5 because remember, we are dealing with quadratics. Now, if a quadratic contains both a second degree term and a first degree term only, there's no constant such as the minus 75 here, it's called an incomplete quadratic. Let me just repeat that. So if you have a second degree and a first degree, it's called incomplete. Solving these equations involve setting y equal to zero, then common factoring the first and second degree terms. The question here reads, find the roots of x squared plus 5x is equal to zero. Roots is another word for solutions and so is zero. So if you ever read those words, they all mean the same. I'm going to follow what was said earlier. I'm going to common factor something out of these two terms and the only thing that's common out of these two terms is the letter x. So I'll factor out an x. This gives me x plus 5 is equal to 0. Given that we have two factors, this and this, each of these need to be set equal to 0. So I'll set x equal to 0 and I'll set x plus 5 equal to 0. This one's already solved. One of our solutions is 0 and our other solution has to be x is equal to negative 5. Now many students commonly make the mistake of bringing this term over and then they have an equation that looks like this, x squared is equal to 5x. Once they get to this stage, they then cancel out this x with one of these and say that the only solution is 5. Make sure that you don't do that with quadratics because you know that given that it's a second degree polynomial, you can have up to two solutions and this eliminates the possibility of the other. Finally. A quadratic that contains a first and second degree term along with a constant, which we'll call C, is called a complete quadratic. These quadratics are often written in general form where you can easily spot the A, B, and C constants as you see right here. A, B, and C are all numbers. There are several techniques used to solve this type of quadratic and those techniques include factoring by trial and error, factoring by decomposition, and even using the quadratic formula. I have a video on all three of these techniques, so I encourage you to look them up and watch them. General form quadratics can also be manipulated algebraically to look different than the general form. For instance, you can manipulate this so that it's in vertex form, shown here, factored form, and standard form, all of which have their pros and their cons. And so there you have it. That is how to classify quadratic equations.